Let me now just say a few words about delegate math and our path toward victory. As all of you know, there are a total of 4,766 Democratic delegates. 4,047 of them are pledged, i.e., they come out as a result of the contest in the various states. 719 are superdelegates, superdelegates. A candidate, Democratic candidate, needs 2,383 votes in order to win the Democratic nomination. Let me be very clear. It is virtually impossible for Secretary Clinton to reach the majority of convention delegates by June 14th. That is the last day uh, that a primary will be held with pledged delegates alone. In other words, once more, it is virtually impossible for Secretary Clinton to reach the majority of convention delegates by June 14th with pledged delegates alone. She will need superdelegates to take her over the top at the convention in Philadelphia. In other words, the convention will be a contested contest. Currently, Secretary Clinton has 1,645 pledged delegates, 55% of the total. We have 1,318 pledged delegates, 45% of the total. There are 10 states remaining where we're going to be vigorously competing, plus the District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, and Guam. We believe that we are in a very strong position to win many of these remaining contests, and we have an excellent chance to win in California, the state with far and away the most delegates. For us to win the majority of pledged delegates, we need to win 710 out of the remaining 1,083. That is 65% of the remaining pledged delegates. That is admittedly, and I do not deny it for a second, a tough road to climb, but it is not an impossible road to climb. And we intend to fight for every vote in front of us and for every delegate remaining. In terms of superdelegates, I would like to just say the following. Obviously, we are taking on virtually the entire Democratic establishment. And it is amazing to me, and I just have to thank our volunteers, that we go into state after state. You got the senators, you got the governor, and you got the mayors. All of them know how to get out the vote. And yet in 17 primaries and caucuses, despite all of that political establishment support, we have won. Now, of the uh, 719 superdelegates, many of those delegates committed themselves to Secretary Clinton even before we got into this campaign. In other words, way back then, she was the anointed candidate. And they said, we're with Hillary Clinton. While she has 520 superdelegates, we have all of 39 superdelegates. In other words, while we have won 45% of the pledge delegates in real campaigns where the people have spoken, we've won 45 percent, we have won only 7 percent of the superdelegates. Two points regarding that. First, those superdelegates in states where either candidate, Secretary Clinton or myself, has won a landslide victory, those superdelegates ought to seriously reflect on whether they should cast their superdelegate vote in line with the wishes of the people of their states. And let me just give you an example of what I mean by that. In the state of Washington, we won that caucus with almost 73% of this vote, of the vote there. 73% of the vote. In anybody's definition, that is a massive landslide. But at this point, Secretary Clinton has 10 superdelegates from the state of Washington, we have zero. I would ask the superdelegates from the state of Washington 
to respect the wishes of the people in their state and the votes they have cast. In Minnesota, we won the caucus there with 61 percent of the vote. Hillary Clinton has 11 superdelegates. We have three. In Colorado, we won that state with 59 percent of the vote, pretty strong margin. Secretary Clinton has 10 superdelegates. We have zero. In New Hampshire, we won that state with more than 60 percent of the vote. Secretary Clinton has six superdelegates. We have zero. And that pattern continues in other states where we have won landslide victories. I would hope very much that the superdelegates from those states where we have won with big margins or, in fact, where Secretary Clinton has won with big margins, to respect the wishes of the people of those states and vote in line with how the people of that state voted. Secondly, and extremely importantly, Secretary Clinton and I obviously have many differences of opinion on some of the most important issues facing our country. We disagree on trade policy, on breaking up Wall Street banks. We disagree on the minimum wage. I want to raise it to $15 an hour. She wants to raise it to $12 an hour. We disagree on whether or not we should impose a tax on carbon to deal with the crisis of climate change. I believe we should. We disagree about the extent to which the wealthy and profitable multinational corporations should be asked to pay their fair share of taxes. We disagree on fracking. I believe we have got to end fracking in this country. We disagree on a number of other issues. But where Secretary Clinton and I strongly agree, and where every delegate to the Democratic Convention strongly agrees, is that it would be a disaster for this country if Donald Trump or some other right-wing Republican were to become President of the United States. Therefore, in my view, it is incumbent upon every superdelegate to take a hard and objective look at which candidate stands the better chance of defeating Donald Trump and other Republican candidates. And in that regard, I think the evidence is extremely clear that I would be the stronger candidate to defeat Trump or any other Republican. 